Hello strangers of the internet, in this video I will be showing how I dealt 36 trillion damage in one hit in the Hypixel Skyblock, becoming number one on the highest critical hit leaderboards. No, this is not clickbait, I actually did do 36 trillion damage. If you are only interested in seeing me do that, skip to the timestamp on screen right now. I highly recommend watching the entire thing though, because I explained basically every little part that went into getting such a ridiculously high number. With that out of the way, let's get started. First, I had to choose a dungeon class to use, because each class gives certain buffs and abilities to help increase damage. Tank and healer are out of the question because they aren't even damage classes. Berserk is alright, but it focuses more on damage per second rather than high single hit damage. Archer is better than Berserk because of its class buff that increases both damage by upwards of 300% or quadruple damage. Archer, however, is also more focused on damage per second, with most archers juggling bone rings. This brings us to the last class, Mage. Mage is usually an AoE or area of effect class. It focuses on crowd control with magic damage. You might say that mage would be the least likely to do a high critical hit, because magic abilities aren't even critical hits. However, there is a certain class ability that makes mage the most broken class for single high hit attacks, the mage beam. The mage beam, unlike magic abilities, hits for critical attacks, and for reasons I will explain later, it hits for ridiculous amounts of damage. Nearly every mage can agree with me that mage beam is normally decent at best. Sure, it can do very high amounts of damage, I'm obviously not denying that, but it's extremely hard to aim, has a limited range of 15 blocks, and it isn't affected by attack speed or ferocity. What makes Mage Beam special, however, is that it involves a third stat in its damage calculation, Intelligence. Melee and bow damage, for Berserk and Archer classes, each rely on only two stats for damage, Strength and critical damage. Mage, however, utilizes three for its Mage Beam hits. Intelligence, Strength, and Critical Damage. This introduces a whole new dimension for damage scaling, and because of this, Mage Beam and the Mage class was my choice. Now, I'll explain the main reason I got that insane number. The main source of damage came from a glitch, commonly known as Bat Stacking. Bat stacking in turn relies on another glitch, the glitched chunk. If you've played dungeons a lot, you might have noticed occasionally that there were chunks of the map that were bugged, in which entities froze and ceased to function like normal. This can happen anywhere, but the most common places include the blood room, the red pillar pressure plate of the second phase of the 4-7 Necron boss fight, the green gate 3 corner of the third phase of the floor 7 necron boss fight, and the chest room after the floor 7 boss fight. In fact, the areas of the floor 7 boss fight I listed are nearly always glitched, providing a very consistent place to bat stack. It was because of this I chose to bat stack in the necron boss room. It also led to some of my decisions on gear, because the only things that spawn in the floor 7 boss room are wither mobs. However, like I said, the glitched chunks can happen anywhere, as long as it's inside dungeons. For example, here it happened in King Midas's room, here it happened in a 1x4 dungeon room. Outside the 4-7 boss fight though, glitched chunks occur much less frequently, and their appearance, if at all, is purely random chance. Now, a bit more about the glitched chunks themselves. You might have noticed that the Midas staff replays its wave animation repeatedly, or the Flower of Truth stops in midair, or the Guided Sheep freezes in place. Bats shot from the Spirit Scepter will also freeze. Bats, however, have a special synergy with an item known as the Bat Person Talisman, or Ring, or Artifact. This accessory gives defense, strength, and intelligence for each bat you have summoned, from the Witch Mask, Bat Pet, or Spirit Scepter. 
For each bat, you get two of each stat I listed with the bat person talisman, five of each stat with the ring, and ten of each stat with the artifact. Obviously, the artifact is the most optimal. This talisman is balanced when ignoring the glitch chunks, because the spirit scepter bats have a limited lifespan, the witch mask has a cap of two bats, and of course you can only have one bat pet active. The glitched chunk, however, freezes your spirit scepter bats, and they will never despawn. That means the stats you get from those bats are kept for the rest of the dungeon. That's where this talisman and the bat stacking glitch gets overpowered. Now, before you go running off with this and bat stacking in every single floor 7 run, I just want to say that normally, bat stacking is extremely impractical in your average dungeon run, because it takes time to give effects. When your only goal is to hit for an absurd amount of damage, however, you can get some extremely good results with bat stacking. By just holding down right click, you can shoot bats with the spirit scepter at the rate of about 4 or 5 bats per second. In the runs I've tested this, I have gotten upwards of 200,000 strength, defense, and intelligence. This is another reason why I chose mage. The bat person accessory family gives strength and intelligence. Only strength increases damage for the archer and berserk classes, but both strength and intelligence increase damage for the mage beam and both can be increased to ridiculously high numbers with bat stacking. This brings us to the next part of getting the highest critical hit, gear. With such high stats, a static 1000 strength from things like necron armor, or a static 5000 intelligence from things like storm armor, I would barely feel a damage increase. What I needed was percent increases in damage. First off, armor sets. There are many armor sets that either increase your damage or your stats by a percentage. Among these are pumpkin armor, monster hunter armor, monster raider armor, superior dragon armor, and tarantula armor. There are more powerful armor sets, however, and they are known as the tuxedos. There are three tuxedos. The two cheapest, the cheap tuxedo and the fancy tuxedo, increase damage by 50% and 100% respectively. The most expensive one, the Elegant Tuxedo, increases damage by 150%. This is the highest possible damage increase from an armor set. A bonus to using the Tuxedos is that they only require 3 armor pieces for the full set bonus, leaving me free to choose a helmet. There were two contenders for the helmet slot, the Crown of Greed and the Tarantula Helmet. The Crown of Greed takes the weapon's damage stat, removes that many coins from your purse, then adds 25% damage to your hits. This sounds good because it's an extra percentage increase. In dungeons, however, you have no purse, so Crown of Greed does not work. This leaves us with the Tarantula Helmet. It has the radioactive ability, granting the wearer one critical damage for every 10 strength they have. This was a godsend. If you recall, bat stacking only gives strength and intelligence to boost damage, but no critical damage. This helmet converts all that excess strength into free critical damage and no other loss. This would ultimately make it better than the Crown of Greed, even if both work in dungeons. Next, I had to find a weapon. Again, I was looking for items that dealt a percentage increase in damage, or gave a percentage increase in stats. There was the Reaper Falchion, which deals plus 200% damage to zombies. Unfortunately, I could not dungeonize it for the extra stat buffs, because I am only Catacombs 31, but the triple damage ability would make it extremely good nonetheless. This brings us to a problem. The Reaper Falchion was by far the best choice, but it's only effective against zombies, and no zombies spawn within the Floor 7 boss room where I was planning to bat stack. It required a glitched chunk to be found within a normal dungeon, 
that is, outside the Floor 7 boss room. If you recall, glitched chunks outside the Floor 7 boss room have been due to pure chance. I couldn't bank on finding a glitched chunk by praying to RNGesus Jesus like this, so sadly, the Reaper Falchion method had to be abandoned. There are, however, more versatile items. The Prismarine Blade also seemed very appealing. It, like the Reaper Falchion, dealt triple damage, but it didn't need to be dealt to zombies. It only required the user to be inside water. Again though, water doesn't exist in the Force of a boss fight, and I would again have to blindly search for a glitched chunk outside the Floor 7 boss room to use this item, so the Prismarine Blade was also crossed off the list. I decided on the Livid Dagger in the end. The Livid Dagger deals plus 100% damage on critical hits if you are behind your target, and it has no other conditions to be met. This meant I could use the Livid Dagger inside the Floor 7 boss room. There was just one small problem. It's hard to make a mob that's trying to kill you turn their back on you. Luckily enough, there was an easy solution. With the inflatable Jerry item, I can make mobs run away from a certain point on the map, and as long as I was close to the inflatable Jerry, I could backstab mobs. There was another trick I used, known as sword swapping. I'm not entirely sure how this works myself, but what you do is, if you hold one weapon, then swap to another weapon and hit a mob shortly after, you deal massively increased damage. The weapon best suited for sword swapping was the giant sword with the one for all ultimate enchantment. This allowed the giant sword to have insane base stats, which then allowed me to hit for much more damage with the livid dagger after sword swapping. I then had to decide on reforges. For weapons, this was mainly a competition between withered and fabled since none of the other reforges even came close. Wither gives higher stats and more damage than Fabled in all normal scenarios, but Withered gives a static amount of strength, while Fabled gives a special ability that increases my damage by up to 20%. It was for this reason I chose Fabled in the end. I put Withered on the Giant Sword just for extra base stats, because Fabled wouldn't carry over its 20% bonus after sword swapping to live a dagger. For armor, the choice was between Ancient and Renowned. Ancient is usually better than Renowned in normal cases, but since I was dealing with numbers in the 100 thousands, plus 1% stats would be more effective than static stat increases. So I chose Renowned for my armor. Renowned is expensive though, so I ended up only having it on one of my armor pieces. This was obviously a place for improvement. Next up were pets. This one was a choice between Wither Skeleton and Ender Dragon, since nothing else even came close. Lion was a good contender with its plus 50% damage on the first strike, and an additional plus 30% damage against mobs level 80 or lower. But because Wither Skeletons found in the Floor 7 boss room are level 100, the Lion would only give plus 50% damage, making it on par with the Wither Skeleton. Wither Skeleton gives me a flat 50% damage increase against Wither Mobs. Ender Dragon gave me a plus 10% increase to all damage stats. In my opinion, that wouldn't have been as good as Wither Skeleton. Even if Ender Dragon did more damage than Wither Skeleton, I don't think it would have been by a significant amount. Next up were enchantments. There were the obvious choices. First Strike 4 was better than Triple Strike 4 because I only needed one hit. Smite 6 because Wither Skeletons are undead and I wasn't going to spend 25 million on a Smite 7 Livid Dagger. Critical 6 for 60% critical damage, which would help a tiny amount. Giant Killer 6 because Wither Skeletons have much more health than me and this would be optimized. Titan Killer requires the target to have defense, and defense hurts my damage more than Titan Killer would help my damage. Finally, I had to decide between Prosecute 5 and Execute 5. Prosecute deals more damage the more percent health the target has. 
Execute deals more damage the less percent health the target has. Since almost anything I would do would instantly kill a mob, and nobody I knew would stay by my side for one and a half hours doing nothing than help lower the health of a mob, Execute was hard to work with, so Prosecute seemed like the best choice. And all the other enchants didn't help for damage, so those are irrelevant. As for ultimate enchantments, a Soul Eater Death Might seemed pretty nice, but the enchantment only adds damage to a weapon, so in crazy numbers like the Trillions, it wouldn't actually affect the damage that much. Swarm, on the other hand, increases damage by a percent. It does, however, require some mobs to be nearby, and seeing as I only had 250 health maximum with Elegant Tuxedo on, surrounding myself with mobs wouldn't have been a great idea. I just stuck with Soul Eater in the end, since I don't think ultimate enchantments would have made a massive difference. Legion would have been the best choice for armor, since it increases damage stats by a percentage, but I couldn't find anyone willing to stay with me for one and a half hours, and Legion 5 was also pretty expensive, so I went with Wisdom 5 on my armor instead. As for talismans, they wouldn't have made a big difference because they give static stat increases. One thing that could have helped was the Ring of Love, which, at its highest tier, increases damage by 100% with a 1% chance to happen. Because of how damage calculation works, the Ring of Love would not have actually doubled my overall damage, but increased it by a smaller amount. I also didn't have the patience to wait for it to activate. So, now putting everything together. After bat stacking for over 90 minutes, I backstabbed a Wither Skeleton, and this was a figure I got. 36 trillion, 376 billion, 261 million, 181 thousand, 548.805. The game only displays damage up to the 32-bit integer limit, which is about 2.1 billion. The game registers numbers much higher, however. This damage is tracked and can be found in API viewers. There is a Discord bot in the Discord of a creator of one of the API websites, which displays leaderboards. The Discord join link will be in the description if you want to see the leaderboard for yourself. Using the Discord bot, I found the record that lists me as the highest critical hitter in all of Skyblock, at least for now. I am nowhere near maxed, and as I've said, there are many more optimizations that I couldn't make for various reasons. This number, 36 trillion, can be much, much higher. I invite everyone to try on top of that number, because I won't be trying to get number one anymore. I'm happy with the number I have now. If you want proof that I didn't just photoshop my number, my API will also be linked in the description. Scroll down to miscellaneous where you will find the highest critical hit. By the way, if you were wondering who the people in the dungeon run with me were, I had actually given up going for the number one highest critical hit because I failed several times. It was also hard to find people willing to help me repeatedly get into phase 2 of the Necron boss fight, so I just started doing normal dungeon runs. But then in this run, my team started throwing and everybody disconnected. So, seeing the opportunity, I stayed. I'd also like to mention that Buggy36, also known as Unknown Sun, the current number 2 placeholder, was number 1 for a very long time. However, as they are much richer and have much better items than me, I expect they will retake the throne once more soon. But at least I'm number 1 for now, at the time of this video, even if the title is only temporary. A fair warning to the people trying to beat me, the game will save any number higher than the 32-bit integer limit as your highest critical hit. For example, if you reached 10 billion damage, then later you did 9 billion damage, the game would only save 9 billion damage as your highest critical hit. So be careful, once you go past 2.1 billion, make sure to never pass the integer limit again if you want to hold your position. And of course, I wish for the best of luck to you. This video took a lot more effort than my usual content, 
So if you'd like to see some more serious and or entertaining stuff than what I usually post, please like the video and subscribe. I don't usually ask for it, but every subscriber means a lot to me. Anyway, that's all I have for now. Bye!